Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Uh, probably never. What I do know. This is still 4 of Beauty. I am still Angie and hopefully you are watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. Now, you will have seen from the thumbnail and the title. And if you've read any of it, don't worry, I don't read it till after the film either. The description. This is the latest in my pick series of films. And I'm delighted that I am collabing with my wee Scottish Viking friend, Will. Now, long-term viewers will have heard me mention him before and mention his channel. But he's taking baby steps into makeup. So, if you want to find out exactly which picture he's chosen as our inspiration for our looks, which palette or palettes I'm using, and how this looks in glorious Technicolor, then my friends, everything's falling over. You have the best seat in the house. Sammy the Sloth Straw is here to confirm that it is time to grab a drink. Have a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Here it comes. Hey, my lovelies. Just grabbing some brushes and giving them a quick once over with the micellar cloth. Just to make sure there's no residual powders in any of them. They shouldn't be because they've all been washed but some of them are stained so I thought that, you know. Just double 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 check. Now uh, you will have seen from the intro that this is a, a pick film and I'm collabing with someone who is not known in the beauty world. Um, his channel started out as um, Will Empath because it was a um, it was a friendship channel. It was let everyone know that you know that they're not on their own. They've got somewhere to go. He started it because um, he and I are both members of headers um channel but obviously headers not very well at the moment so she's had to take a step back from that and her channel was very much alleviating loneliness letting people know they'd got somewhere they could go to just for a chat and a catch up and just general chit chats and not really discussing anything in particular you know things that are going on in the news things that were impacting her life, she'd do like folk tales and stuff, so yeah it was good, um, but as I said unfortunately at the moment she's not very well, she's had to take a step back, and of course we're all, those of us who pray are praying for higher recovery very hard, uh, those of us who don't are sending good wishes, I'm kind of doing both. <laughs> Uh, but Will started his channel. It's now Will Venus because he was getting a lot of people coming on going, well, you're not talking about empath stuff all the time. So he figured that the Will empath thing was confusing people, so he turned it into Will Venus. Um, he's also got a channel called Aphrodite Postiche. I had to think about how to pronounce that one then. Uh, because he actually makes wigs. He's a huge Lady Gaga fan and he has nicknamed me Mama Makeup which is probably the highest compliment he could give me <laughs> from himself um, because knowing what he feels about Lady Gaga, the fact that he's calling me Mama Makeup is indeed 
a compliment. But Will wanted to get into doing makeup. He was fascinated by makeup um, and he thought it would be a way for him to maybe have another outlet in terms of calming and you know sort of therapeuticness. Um, I'm just going to pop some of this on. This is my antiperspirant facial primer. Nearly done with this one now. It's nearly empty. So not quite. Um, yeah, so he wanted to get into doing makeup and was going to start. He was asking my advice on which palettes to buy. And I said to him, Well, if you want, you can give me your address and I'll send you some of the palettes that I've decluttered because obviously I can't donate any of them, even lightly used ones, to. Um, women's shelters anymore because with the COVID thing they will only accept brand new still sealed makeup and my mates had been round and picked out what they wanted and I pulled some out for my goddaughters so I thought right okay I've still got some palettes here Barely used because where I've got so many palettes, even the ones that I use a lot are not heavily used. Mm. And um, I sent him a load of palettes up, and he started playing with makeup and thoroughly enjoys it. And I said to him, Look, when you feel up to it, if you want, we can do a collab, we can do a pick together because he loves I think that's one of his his favorite of the series that I do on my channel and he's like yep yeah, yeah since I feel up to it I will and then a couple of weeks ago he's like right okay do you know what life's too short sod it let's do it oh, brilliant so I sent him through a load of photos as I always do and he chose this one here of this gorgeous red panda I love red pandas, they're so cute, oh, they're so tiny, Oof. they have got murder mittens though, mm -hmm. um, and I thought, oh, I'm actually quite glad he chose that, because one of the palettes I've not used very much recently, is my coloured rain, safari rain that Chris bought me, which is orange, green and brown, which is pretty much what most of that picture is. Those of you who are new to my channel, my pick series, there are two rules. You can only use colours that you see in the picture and you cannot add any. And rule two is you don't have to use all of them. So for example down here you can see a bit of blue sky and part of his fur here is like a violety colour, the way the light's shining on it. There's red leaves, orange leaves, green leaves, there's the different shades of brown in the trunk, there's his markings, so there's, there's a lot of options. But for me, the main colours are red, orange, green and brown. So I thought, do you know what, my Safari Rain palette is perfect for that. And I haven't used it for ages, and I want to, because it's lovely. So that's the palette that I'm going to be using today. Uh, as always, this remains a teaching channel, so through the application process, I'm mainly going to be talking about the makeup, the techniques, etc. I'll talk a bit more about Will at the end of the film. So, I'm using my Jefferson Starship. X Voldemorphy um, <clears throat> brushes because I've avoided using them on screen for quite a while but they are actually quite nice brushes so, so I'm going to start off with JSA which is basically a big old 
floofy, if I hold it against that you can probably see better, floofy brush. But I'm going to insert a clip first, which will just be my eyes on screen, where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids. The way that the makeup wears on them throughout the day is very similar, but it is still different. And the application method. I'm so sorry. I've been up since half past four again. And the bright light always makes me yawn. But I'm not going to complain because I've actually got decent light for filming in. I have got strip lights behind the camera if it clouds over. But um, yeah, the application method is different depending on which eye type you have. So. When I'm doing the application, it will again just be my eyes on screen. Now, problem with that is when I look down to add more pigment or clean a brush, you are going to get a lovely view of my widow's peak. But that's a small price to pay when it comes to actually being able to see what I'm doing. Which, let's face it, is always a bonus. So, the next clip will be me up close and personal talking you through the eye shapes, then I'll be back to pop some coloured pigments onto my eyelids. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it, but if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So, unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now, she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. 
and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same matte lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. I'm actually going to, I've changed my mind, I'm not going to start with a floofy brush. I'm going to start with a slightly more contained brush. This is the JS12. Because I'm, I want a little bit more control where I'm first applying pigment. And I'm going to start off by going into clay. Now, I always use the Viennese Waltz method of blending, which is Natural turns towards the nose, a fleck of what we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this is because I'm 47 years old and I've lost over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves, it creases, it folds over on itself. If you just do the windscreen wiper, that's when you get the skin folding over and you get those telltale white stripes or tiger stripes. Viennese these waltz, you're gently manipulating the skin first one way and then the other without putting too much pressure on. I am so sorry, I'll try and cut some of these yawns out if I continue to do it. Bright light always does it to me. Normally I put sunnies on, but then that would really defeat the object. <clears throat> yeah, so like, like I said, you know, by manipulating the skin in both directions without pushing too hard on it, you're not going to cause any further damage. And it's not just old and people who've lost weight, or older people and people who've lost weight, that have this issue. Because I know slim teenagers that have looser eyelid skin. So it can just be genetics. Right, so I've dipped into clay. I'm going to start this just in the inner part here and just bring this up. Just want a flash of the orange just here. And you can see how easily this blends as well. Although I will say a lot of that is the primer it can make a heck of a difference. You know, and yes, I've got a code with Crow and Pebble. Um, but since I've used their primer, I've not really used anything else. I've got a matte paint pot here that I haven't used for ages. I've got shape tape that I haven't used for ages. Um, I just find generally that this is the better option. You know, I've got Gerard um, soft canvas bases, but I use that when I'm cutting my crease rather than all over the lid. I mean, there are a couple of palettes of mine that don't like blending on this particular primer, eyelid primer. But the majority of them, and the majority of people that I've recommended it to have said the same. The beauty of this particular primer is that it, it's a cream 
but it sets down to like a powder finish without you having to actually set it with powder which means you don't have to choose between depth of colour and ease of blending now the reason I'm sitting back and just relaxing my brows and looking at it is because you can see although I've done exactly the same shape this eye is showing more of the orange than this one is so I just need to bring this up a little bit This happens occasionally um, with my fibre, I get random, random sort of puffiness in hands, feet, face. But by relaxing your brows like this and checking that they look the same, this is why I always do sort of one colour at a time rather than doing one eye and then coming back to do the other one because if you do need to make a change like that you're not necessarily going to be able to spot whereabouts you need to make the change once you've got all the colours on so it's much easier to adjust shaping if you're doing one colour at a time so I'm just cleaning this brush off on a microfiber cloth I much prefer doing this to using um, a colour switch, they're far too harsh on the bristles, especially if you're using natural bristles. Right, I'm going to go into Jungle, which is the deepest green in the palette. And I'm just going to put that kind of halfway to my natural crease in the brow. I'm just going to bring this up meet that orange so how's your day been has it been a good one I hope it has if it hasn't then I sincerely hope tomorrow is better and if you are at the start of your day, well then darling I hope it's as fabulous as you are. I'm just going to gently sort of buff and circle between the two colours just there. Perhaps pick up a little bit more of that clay so I'm not losing any depth of orange just to blend the two together just there like that nice nice and then I'm going to do the same on the other side now when it comes time to do the lid here I don't know if you can see I've got extra deep creasing just here that's when my eye was pulled around when I was a kid, and I'm talking like 40 odd years ago now, I was, you know, five, six, seven years old. And um, the problem that I have there is even when I do circular movements and stuff, when it's time to put colour onto the non onto the mobile section of the lid. I have to break my own rule about not pulling your skin out because if I don't what happens is that the powder packs loosely into those creases and then throughout the day ends up getting into my eye and falling onto my face and it's very painful and uh, doesn't look too good either now in my viewfinder the green this side is looking a little patchy 
but in my mirror it is not however if you get that issue pick up some pigment just tap it into place Once you've established the pigment, then just blend the edges if you have that issue. Just pick up a little bit more of that orange clay, just to get the two colours blended. I'm going to go into Congo Basin, which is the olivey green. I'm going to use this just along the top of this green section here, just to soften that edge a little bit. What I will do in just a moment is go over it with the bigger fluffy brush to really soften and blow those edges out. Because whoever the, the whatever the width of the head of the brush is, <clears throat> that's how far out it'll blend. Your pigment. So if you want something really blown out, you're best off laying the pigment down with a smaller brush like this and then blowing it out with a larger brush which I will show you in just a momento. back to my dentist. Those of you who remember the, uh, the chair ride incident um, and because I was so nervous because of what happened last time and I'm very nervous of dentists anyway, I've had very bad experiences with some dentists I'm very unlucky in that respect. Um, Basically, they said, look, we're not going to treat you here. We're going to refer you on to somewhere that can do um, sedation. So, so I drove all the way out there again for nothing. Right, this is just a clean, fluffy brush. And I'm literally just going to buff over the edges of that green. And you can see that's really softening that blend for me. Yeah, so I'm kind of... I think, well, what's going to happen then? Oh, we'll have to refer you back to somebody who can do sedation. So I'm like, great. How long's that going to take? Well, it's taken me 18 months to find an NHS dentist full stop. So... Goodness only knows how long it's going to take to find one. I tell you, by the time they actually get me a dentist, I'm going to have no back teeth left. Because the problem is the medication that I'm on weakens my teeth. And where I had the issues of the fillings coming out, which then of course left the tooth itself weakened. As I'm eating, no matter how careful I am, bits of tooth keep breaking off. Some of them are right down to the jawline at the back by the wisdom teeth or where the wisdom teeth were. So yay. Really looking forward to having false teeth at my age. Basically I need to win the lottery. I need to win about 20 grand. So I can get those ones that they just screw into your gum line so they're like your own teeth. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would love those. Just knock me out, pull them all out, put those ones in so I can leave with a full set of teeth. But I don't have to keep taking out and putting in a jar at night, you know. That'd be 
lovely. Right. I'm going to go in with a really tiny, tiny, teeny, weeny little brush now. This is the JS13. And I'm going to go into Matriarch, which is the deep brown, deep chocolatey brown. And I'm going to pop this just on the edges of my mobile lid and just flick the edge up towards where the end of my brow is just to give a fake wing and then again just fill in that outer third and go a little bit past the orange just to get a nice dark outer edge there. Can you see the difference that that makes with giving the eye definition? If you've had to create a new line, this is where you would follow your new line with the darkest shade that we're using. Because the darker shades go backwards and the lighter shades come forwards. So it will trick the eye into thinking that this part of the eye is further back because it's in more shadow. So that's a really good way of, you know, tricking, tricking the eye and giving yourself the eye shape that you actually want rather than the one that God gave you. You know I had a comment once from someone before I had my YouTube channel, it's when I was just putting pictures up on Insta. And I had some, it's when I was going through my phase of, I was wearing more natural or nude or pastel eye makeup. And I was known more for wafty lip colours like your greens and your blues and stuff. You know, I had the full gamut of all the Jefferson Starships weird colours. And I actually had someone say to me, Why don't you get your lips done if you're going to be showing off makeup? To which I replied, uh, I'm quite happy with the face God gave me, thanks. And that person never came back and commented again. I think I might have struck a bit of a nerve with them, you know. I don't understand why people feel the need to comment stuff like that. I really don't. It's like, what business is it of yours? If I want my lips done, I get my lips done. If I don't want my lips done, I don't get my lips done. I've got no problem if people want to get their lips done. One of my friends has got her lips done and she's got all kinds. She's got her tongue split. She's got tattoos and piercings galore and she looks absolutely amazing but it's not the look that I want so you know right now I'm going to use this flat brush this is the hiccups now JS24 I'm going to be using this to apply the shimmer pigment to my lids. Now, when you are applying shimmers, you should never put a wet brush into a pressed shimmer. It's my front door. The hubby's here. So he's got, he, I can hear him at the door now. Um, so I always apply the pigment first, then wet it. You can wet it with anything. I'm using this 
make up a possession fit fix because you all know my choice of facial spray is Gerard Cosmetics. Uh, I love that one. Yeah, that one. Top. There you go, darling. That one can just stay in the front room for me. Okay, face. is that everything you were expecting? I uh, think so. There, there might be something else in the normal post. That's alright, I'll keep the ear out. That was hubby. Um, yeah, I'm just going to use this Fix Fit because everyone knows my, my spray of choice is my Gerard Cosmetics. Currently using the Rose one. For those of you who are wondering. Um, and yes, I do have a code with them. So, <sighs> this is the problem with fibro. Your brain goes because I got distracted by hubby. Yes, you can use um, a moisturising spray like your Mac or your Mario Badescu. You can use a setting spray, priming spray, finishing spray. You can even save an empty spray bottle, wash it out, put fresh water in each day. But just never put a wet brush into a dry pigment, please, into a pressed pigment. So I'm going to start off by going into Green Valley. I'm just going to pack the pigment onto both sides. Of the brush. Isn't that a gorgeous green gold? Woo. And then <coughs> spray the brush. But this bit is now wet so I'm going to tuck that into my knuckles and spin because the last thing we want is water getting down the ferrule and loosening the glue that's holding the bristles in place because then you'll end up with a very expensive stick. Right, I've got a mirror here so I can look down into it, so hopefully I hopefully will stay in frame for you. And I'm just going to pop this onto the inner part of the mobile lid and just pull it about halfway across. Now, as I said, this side I have to break my own rule but I'm going to show you how I do it so I cause as little additional damage as possible. I gently flex the lid only far enough to stretch the creases flat. I'm not pulling it up around the ear roll. And then applying and blending this as quickly as I can and gently putting the eye back and finishing off any edge work. That way I'm doing as little additional damage to my eye as possible. Don't do that unless you already have the same issue as me or you will cause yourself an issue and I promise you once you've got it and ain't going away anywhere. Okay? Okay. I'm now going to go into Tigress. Oh, lovely colour. Look at that. Oh, isn't that glorious? What another wonderful, glorious morning. I hate it. I'm so excited for Hocus Pocus too. Right, I have spritzed, I have dried the ferrule, I'm now going to apply this to the second part of my mobile lid that so far has no pigment on it. As you can see, even with wetting the brush I'm getting fallout. It happens. I've got a brush around here somewhere that I use for sweeping it away. Where is it over there? Not that it's an issue because obviously I do my eyes before I do my 
and foundation anyway. I'll finish off the edges with that in just a minute. Just going to come across and do this side. And you can see this lid moves an awful lot more than this one does. But I'm not putting it out because I don't need to for this bit. Right, and then I'm going to use the very tip of the bristles to just smudge the edge there where it meets that brown like so and then I'm going to clean the brush off dip into Amazon basin that where the two shadows meet just to blend the two colours together dry that brush off dip back in do the same on this eye like so I'm really liking that right my beautiful ones I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and whatnot on my face and I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now, for me, it's going to be a little while before I can chat to you again. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely blooming instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey, just finessing my soap brows. I'm having a bit of a This one behaved itself marvellously. This one, Tasmanian Devil today. Now I need to decide which colour to do them. Just cleaning the excess soap out of the spoolie. In case you're wondering what that noise was, I'm not scratching myself. Alrighty then. I think I might go into Congo Basin, which is that really nice olive green that I used up here. Let me get my closer mirror, my eyesight, honestly. I suppose the fact that I only see with one eye it's not doing that badly for full seven. Yeah, this is how I get my brows to match my look flawlessly. Um, I used to use coloured pomades, but then Revolution sort of stopped doing the coloured pomades. And at the time I wasn't buying from KVD or using them on my channel so I had to find an alternate way of doing things so I tried the soap brow and I liked how it looked but obviously the soap brow can leave your brows a little bit sticky However, if you then go over them with eyeshadow, eh? 
you get your brows perfectly matching your look and B it sets the brow for you see how cute is that and now my eye is going to start watering yay great timing couldn't have done this in the 10 minutes I was putting my foundation so on. 10 minutes. In the few minutes I was putting my foundation on, no? No, apparently not. Right, smudgery brush. This is the JS written in white on pale pink. Really helpful. 10. I'm going to dip into Matriarch initially, which is that deep brown that I used here. I'm going to run that to about there. In the brush, and then I'm going to dip into Amazon Base and tap off well, and then use that for the remainder, and just to smudge that brown out a little bit. I was going to do a wing, but if this eye is starting to water, I think I might skip that. Just for safety's sake, you know. Just be careful. My phone alarm. That I'd set for this time last week and completely forgot it was going to repeat itself today. Right. I haven't used my synopsis highlighter. For some time. That's this one. So I'm going to use this on my inner corner. Bring that down now because that's the icy white. Oh, enough! Come on! Seriously, I got absolutely nothing on my phone all the while I wasn't recording. Uh, this can be the, the white parts of the red panda's face, you see. That was very well I me, mean, wasn't it? You see. And I might even pop a little bit of that. Just up under the tail of my brow there, just to lift it slightly, because apparently, folks, your brows drop along with everything else as you get older, isn't that great? I can't remember if this is glow recipe or give me glow. We're looking on the back. It gives me the ingredients. It tells me it was made in the USA. It tells me it's called Synopsis. And it's... 
Oh, I think it might be the JD glow. Which companies will put it on there probably? Got so many different one-offs from different companies, you know. to use this as my highlighter today. It's a bit light and bright but do you know what? I haven't done makeup for so long. And I have got my orgasm blush on from NARS that my lovely friend Shari sent me. Right lovelies I'm gonna pause you one more time. I'm gonna decide what I'm doing highlight wise. Mascara, lippy, do something with the hair which has got a mind of its own today. And I'll be right back. For you, again, instant. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I did decide to go for that highlight and it is gorgeous. Seriously. See what I mean? the minute I press record but if I set it onto silent I don't hear when the doorbell goes off <sighs> and alarms come through on silent anyway right the mascara I used was the elf lash it loud I wasn't overly keen on this at the start because it's a very wet formula however uh, I opened it up every day for a, a fortnight or two weeks if you're American and it's now dried down a little bit and it's much more the consistency that I like because I've got naturally quite long lashes anyway so <laughs> if I have a very wet formula I get like the spider footprints here and here so that's much better now it's dried out a little bit more I can see why people liked it the lipstick hubby got me one of the matching lipsticks from the uh, Safari Rain when it was released. This is Meishi Rain, so I thought I've got the matching lippy. I'm going to wear the matching lippy. Um, face spray it was my Gerard Slay All Day in a Rose. Now, this one was done in collaboration with Nakia Joy, the Australian. Um, YouTuber. If you are worried you're going to smell like an old lady, don't. This is not old lady rose. This is modern, light, fresh rose smell. So I like this. Um, there's a couple of the Slay All Days that I find with my sensitive eyes I can't use because even the fumes of them coming up off my cheeks and stuff make my eyes water and that's the jasmine and the lemongrass so if you've got sensitive eyes it might be wise to um, use those with caution or buy a small one first um, but yeah and I've not had that issue with any of the others and I really love that rose I've bought it again and again and again I think my favourites are the rose, the peach and the coconut in case you were wondering you probably weren't but I told you anyway so, this is my finished look from this photograph, chosen by the lovely Will. What do you think? Have I successfully um, translated the red panda look to you? I really hope you can't hear the neighbour with his leaf blower going. See, no matter what time I sit down to film, I get this. I mean, I could have filmed at half past four when I got up, but then I'd have been filming under artificial light, which I don't like doing. Anyway, um, if you're one of my regular viewers, uh, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people still, but they are leaving me in your feed, so it's not obvious you've been deleted. When you check your subscription status, it's also worth checking your notification status 
mine keeps getting knocked back to um, personalised instead of all, which means I don't get any at all. So double check that. Then once you've left me a cheeky little comment, a cheeky little like, and maybe even a share, no, not the if I could turn back to him, share, the sharing video. I don't know what that was. Weird kind of breaststroke, maybe. Anyway, um, that would be awfully helpful with the algorithm, especially seeing as how with my chronic pain and my... Let's just say the black dog's been barking quite a bit recently. It's really messed with my upload schedule. I've been so good up until this year. Three films a week, every week, regardless. This year, I've really been letting you down and I'm sorry for that. Uh, so anything you can do to give me a little bit of a boost to the algorithm with likes, comments and shares is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Once you have done that... I'm going to need you to go over to Will's channel. Now, hang on, I need a wiggle, hold on. Now, my lovely friend Will, he's my wee Scottish Viking, because he did one of these DNA test things and apparently it brought out that he's got some Viking in him, so that's kind of tease you about that now but it's a friendly teasing it's a banter between friends um, yeah I'm gonna need you to go over to his channel check it out he does a lot more than just makeup as I said I think this is one of his first if not his very first application of makeup on camera film he's done a couple of unboxings when I've sent him um, makeup and he's done a couple of haul videos but I think I'm right in saying this is his first application on camera so please go along please support him for me he's a lovely chap um, show him the same love and respect that you always show me in my uh, comments feel free to give him gently worded constructive criticism if you see something that you think there's a technique that you use that would make it easier for him likewise if there's a technique you think that I could be using <laughs> to make my makeup application easier I'd quite like to know that too hiccups mm. um, but yeah just just go along support him in his his tentative baby steps into makeup. I am really looking forward to seeing what look he's going to do uh, and in fact while you're watching me I'm probably going to be watching him. So, um, if you're new here to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. Um, I'm not sure if you're here from Will's channel or if you just tripped over me some other way. However, it is lovely to have you here. It would be awesome if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. And it's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button. Turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube put their finger out and send you some. In the meantime... I've got an awfully large backside, yes, but I also have an awfully large back catalogue of films you can catch up on. Now, most of mine, I'd say probably 99% of mine are makeup related in some form or another. I've got tags, collabs, product reviews, tutorials, my Zodiac series that I really must pick up again. Um, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So I'm sure you'll find something that'll uh, interest you. And as I've said, since time immemorial, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, settle down with your coffee and your custard cream or your cup of tea and your tiffin biscuit and just 
while away a few me time minutes watching me blather on usually whilst applying colour pigments to various parts of my face on that note that's quite enough for me for one day all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Go visit Will.